Good morning, good morning, Word of His Power Church, online and in person. How is everyone this morning? Amen. Look at someone and say, good morning. Make sure you say it with a smile on your face. Amen. In our family, um, Pastor Jay and Sarah, when they wake up, they are ready to face the day, talk and everything. I am not. I wake up, I like quiet until I have my coffee, figure out where I am. I'm still on earth. We're good. Amen. So on that note, let's do our Holy Ghost faith confessions. Find someone around you next to you, online church as well. If you don't have anyone, say it to yourself. Pretend you're seeing yourself in front of yourself and say it. Okay, so everybody found someone with a smile on your face. Point to them and say, something good is happening to you today in Jesus' name. Now point to yourself and say, something good is happening to me today in Jesus' name. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Amen. It's going to be an awesome Sunday. Of course, this being Communion Sunday, we're going to be taking communion together as a spiritual family and as a natural family at the end of service. Pastor J. Araman will lead us in that. So in-person church, make sure you received or picked up your pre-packaged communion. You should have received it right at the front there of the foyer. If you haven't done so already, you can do that now. It's very easy. If you've never seen something like that, the top layer is the way wafer, and then the bottom layer is the juice. Everyone say juice. All right. I know someone asked me, is this wine? No, it's juice. All right. I double checked. All right. And so, of course, online church as well. If you don't have a prepackaged one, you can use any kind of uh, water or juice that you have on hand in your fridge. And of course, any kind of bread. Keep that handy. Keep that ready so that we can all take communion together. Amen. And of course, this being the first Sunday of the month, we are starting a new series with Pastor Jay Raman called Harnessing Your Emotions. And it's going to be an awesome, awesome series on feelings and emotions and where they fit when it comes to faith because there's some error uh, that he, uh, that, and questions that people have concerning these matters. So he's going to be delving in that. It's going to be so awesome. So make sure you uh, get ready for that. Make sure that when he's preaching the word, you're listening, but you're an active listener so that you're not just watching him preach, but you're receiving the word. Amen. Because that's one thing we strive to do in this church. We never preach our opinion. It's the word of God. And I do believe we've, he's especially done a great job in that. Amen. Also, uh, other announcements this morning. So many. Uh, don't forget, of course, children and are dismissed for uh, their service right after praise and worship. And the offering. We're doing offering this morning as well. We're going to honor God with our giving. And so it's going to be an awesome Sunday. If you would like to join online prayer, you can do so by signing up on our website at wohp.org. You'll just see the link online church. And you can get the links to Wednesday and Friday prayer. Sunday prayer is held in person and online. On that note, I do believe I'm done. Let's continue with the service. Amidst the tumult of anger, joy, fear, and longing, discover how these powerful waves can be mastered, not by suppressing our vibrant palette of feelings, but by anchoring in the unshakable truth of God's word. As new creations in Christ, we're summoned to rise above the storm, guided by the Holy Spirit, transforming every challenge into triumph. With the wisdom of Scripture as our compass, we'll navigate the deep, uncharted waters of our emotions. Prepare to be empowered as we learn to rule the waves within us, anchoring our souls in faith and walking in victory. The adventure begins now. God. Greetings to every one of you here and out who are joining us around the world. We thank you and praise God for your commitment to follow Jesus Christ by partaking of the Word of God and partaking the grace of God to be doers of the Word. Once again, in Jesus' name, I greet everyone. And I'm really so excited to start this month 
a series about which I have been thinking about years, seeking answers, and what does the Bible say? So finally, led of the Lord, I am starting a new series, and I really also enjoy dance introduction of the entire subject, he put it in a poetical form, I would say. Because see, yes, faith people, we are always told, the just shall walk by faith, not by feeling. The just shall walk by faith, not by sight. These are all scripture. But you know, important thing is, we have to understand who we are in Christ and how God has made us in order to do what God tells us to do. You come to church not just to hear sermons. You come to church to find out your identity in Christ Jesus. Once you are born again, you are no longer the same old person. You are no longer the same person who has been walking in the natural, with natural five senses and feeling and reasoning. God has delivered us like we studied on Sunday, Friday night. Sin has no power, authority, and dominion over your life. And if sin has no dominion, you have power. You have power, all right. But anytime when we talk about power, people automatically understand some kind of, you know, kind of a, a lightning, thundering power. No, the power also comes with authority. When you exercise your power, that when you exercise your authority, the power is released in to the measure you need for this for the situation. Like example for electricity. You know, electric power when it's originally generated, you cannot directly use that. It has to come, flow through different transformers and process. And then by the time it comes to our home, it's a small block with a switch. But with that, you can use so many appliances, everything. The power, the authority is your switch. In spiritual life, your switch is your faith. That is your authority. And your power is the regenerated Spirit man inside you, together with the Holy Ghost, power. There are just, when we talk power, people just automatically reason, ah, power means, oh, there's going to be a lightning. No, there are times, the Bible says, when Jesus cast out demons, he himself says in the book of Luke, he did it with the finger of God. The Holy Ghost is compared to finger of God. I mean, he didn't have to use all the power of God which took to raise up Jesus from the dead to, to deal with the devil. You need only this finger. I don't know, here, you know, uh, in our home, back home, when they had birthday cake and all, of course, when we attended other people's, in our religion, we never celebrated birthday by cutting cakes and all. We went to temple and rolled out in the temple. So, but when we visit our other friend's house, when they had uh, birthday cake, because the country, they buy and it is not like everybody is living in air condition. There are flies there. And the fly will come and sit on the cake. Here they will say, yeah, and they will throw the cake and bring another one. Back home in our country, we use the finger of God. The fly is gone, you eat. And in the Bible, Satan's, one of the names for Satan is Lord of Flies. So he needs only finger of God. So you have to learn, first and foremost, who you are, how God created. Bible says that God created all creatures, but you and I are called humans, created in his likeness and image. So when God recreated you, he refers to you and me as another creature, 
But this creature is in the likeness and image of God because he recreated your spirit man. Inside the same form he gave you. So in that, inside that, he put your spirit man, which is attached to your soul. Your soul is attached to your spirit man. But soul is not saved. And your body is not saved. So you find in the scriptures, many places in Corinthians, in the book of James, Philippians, work out your own salvation. If you are saved, why should you work out your salvation? I thought you are saved. Yeah, your spirit man is saved. He is recreated. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation, new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. As far as from God's perspective, he made it. He considered it done. Now, because you are and I are made in this likeness and image, and since we live in this body, we saw, according to the book of Romans, 5th chapter, to 5th, 6th and 7th chapter, sin is in the flesh, in the body. So sin is controlled and sin still works in a born-again, spirit-filled person in his body. But it can be controlled, it can be overcome. We saw that because if sin doesn't have dominion over us, because we have power and authority, we can overcome sinning. That means, put it in a simpler, easier way, you and I can avoid sinning. And yet you find many times people sin. That is because they are, they are not taught how to do things. God created church and all these fivefold ministry not to have some international ministry. It is to train the believer, get people saved and train them how to be living like God himself. When it says in 2 Corinthians 5.17 that we are new creatures in Christ Jesus, why did he recreate us? The answer is in Ephesians, the second chapter. I will read that in the Amplified Version. Second chapter, Ephesians 2, and see the 10th verse in the Amplified Version. It says here, Eighth verse says how you got saved by grace through faith, or through grace by faith. Now, here, the tenth verse says, For we are God's own handiwork, His workmanship, talking about your inner born-again spirit man. We are God's own handiwork, His workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking path which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. So, we know Jesus said, the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I am come that I may start the greatest religion on this world. No. That I am come that they may have life and that life more abundantly. What is that life? It is described in Ephesians 2.10. God recreated ahead of time. He prearranged this wonderful life. A life full of health, soundness, strength, Wisdom, anointing, power, money, prosperity, victory. Everything is arranged ahead of time. You see where it is? Yeah, see, God, to achieve that, he gave his faith. So God's faith, we have been studying when we studied about faith. 2 Corinthians 4 says, We look not to the visible, but into the invisible. 
So all this blessing for a new creature is already there. Everything. But you are coming to church to get the direction, instruction, correction, and the training how to incorporate step by step in your own life and start living that life as if you have already reached heaven. So, God has made everything visible. So, God kind of faith which is in us, this is what it does. The faith in us has the power and this is what it does if you cooperate with the word. The God kind of faith sees the invisible, believes the incredible, and receives the impossible. That is what it happens. So if you are a sincere believer, decided that what God has got for you and you will have it by your faith, you be determined and be consistent, you can have it in this lifetime. I am talking to you from experience. Okay, I come from a totally a different religion, different training, different everything. Yet, the word of God works. Word of God will never fail. The first scripture I remember, I believed when I heard the Bible, when Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass. I said, I grabbed that. This is enough. This is enough. And I have met in real life people who have done great and mighty things just by this Bible. So I am going to be one of them. Already we are on the road. But if only me is not enough, you as a part of this church, you must have that experience. You must have the reality. Why the Bible says, oh, taste and see the Lord is good. Is it just for quoting or you can really... Tasting is an experience. That means you can experience the reality of God. You can experience the reality of the word of God. You can experience everything what is written to make it into real life. It is possible. So with this background, why do we want to study this series called, I have titled the series, Harnessing Your Emotions. Harnessing Your Emotion. Because God created you like I said earlier, a spirit, then a soul is attached to that, and you are living in this body. Spirit is recreated, born again, made into the nature of God with the power of God living in you. This you are going to believe. It's not a feeling, it is not a goosebump. Bible says you believe Holy Spirit is living in you. Right? Then the soul, what is soul? Your soul has got three parts. First part is your mind. The mind is like a, one of the best ever computer. Even man can never create such a kind of a computer. God created your mind. It has got such capacity with such speed. It travels so fast. In a, in a second, you can go to any part of the world. You can go to any part of the universe within your mind. And then, to that, that main job of the mind is, it processes something called thoughts. Thoughts from your own heart. Thoughts from spoken words from your mouth. Every time we speak a word, a thought is formed, given to the mind to process. What is this? I'm not making up anything or I'm not reading psychological book. This is scriptural. You read that in 1 Corinthians 13. It says, we as a, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, understood as a child. That means understanding comes based on the thoughts you process. So whatever you speak, it creates thoughts. That is why... To be an overcomer, God says, keep saying my words, my thoughts are greater than your thoughts. So you speak the word of God, God's thoughts will overrule the thoughts of your own heart and the thoughts of devil and thoughts coming from everywhere else. It will overrule because when you speak the word of God, those thoughts come and occupy your mind. What is the result? Isaiah 26 says, he keeps him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him for he trusts in God. See, what are the advantages? They're all, they're all doable. They're all just, just religious scriptures. This is how God gave all these ingredients 
to do what is recorded in Ephesians 2.10 to live a wonderful, successful life which he has already organized, seen, and made it ready for us. So now, mind while it is processing thoughts, my job is to just tell what is going on. So that is called the faculty of reasoning. Mind will say, this thought, I have heard this before. I have seen this before. This thought does this, this thought. So that the mind voices what is going on through something called a reasoning power or intelligence, which is given to all people. Every human being, they are born with this. Then, to express those thoughts, what the thought is saying, you have got to express that. So for that, God, it is God who gave us the emotions. God created all of us with emotions. And that is why he chose the people who are called Israelites, who are the most Expressive people on planet Earth are the Jewish people. I didn't make this up by watching Hollywood movies. In the Bible, you see it is recorded, when these Jewish people got mad, they were not like you and me, I was threatening. When they got mad, they, put, they tore their clothes and they got angry. They took stones and stoned everybody. When they are upset and want to determine to get some answer, the Bible says they put ashes on their head. They went fasting. It's an expression of their emotion. So God chose these people with expression, emotions. And the same emotion is given to us, but in the New Testament, God is telling by example, what happened to those people chosen by God? Remember, you and I are also chosen. What happened to those people when they, what they did with the emotion? Because emotion now is given to us to be harnessed. There are four processes. To be harnessed, to manage, control, and overcome. So you and I are called by God. Bible teaches this. You have to harness your emotion. Then you have to manage your emotion. Then you have to control your emotion. Then you have to overcome your emotion. You say, this is hard work. No, you want to live a good life, right? And all this can be done because God says, I will help you. I will empower you. I will show you and I will do it. And you don't have to do any of this like in the Old Testament, the laws. If you break one of that, God is going to destroy you. No. God says, when you miss it, my grace is there. I will help you. I will help you and I will give you teachers and I will show you through their teaching, the correction, everything what you make. You keep making correction, you will reach your destination. So emotions, contrary to generally the psychologists talk of emotions too. But what does the Bible teach us about emotion? Bible teaches us, in Colossians it says, the 11th verse or 12th verse, it says, thanks be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance with the saints in light. Uh -huh. That means, what is the inheritance? All the good things of life is you are inheriting because Jesus died and rose again. You are only qualified. How do you enjoy that inheritance? A lot of people think, yeah, I will die when I go to heaven. No, you are called to enjoy the inheritance on this earth. So in order to enjoy inheritance, the answer is given in the book of Revelation. Only those who overcome us will be rewarded. Somewhere in Revelation 12th chapter, you can read about this. Only overcomers will be rewarded. What is the overcomers? People who are learning and overcoming. First and foremost, your own emotion. Because emotions, 
Contrary to psychological teaching, because psychology deals only with mind or psych. That is where you get the word psychology. But God deals with spirit, soul, and body. So if you see, in detail there are lots of emotions you can talk about, but all boils down to only three emotions. Love, joy, peace, sorrow, grief, sorrow, and pain. Positive is love, joy, peace is an emotion. Grief, sorrow, and pain is also an emotion. So, that is why it says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit, right? So, the grief is connected with your spirit man. Sorrow is connected with your mind, soul. Pain is connected with your body. So, now that we are three parts, spirit man expresses what is feeling or something. His voice is called in the Bible, your conscience. That's why we read, Paul said, I keep my conscience without offense toward God and man. That means, as long as your conscience is seeing what your, the word is saying to you to do, and you walk by faith, your conscience won't give you that yucky feeling, oh, something is not okay. Conscience is clear. That means your conscience is not to offense with God. What is the result? People think, oh, these are spiritual. No, this has value. When your conscience is clear, in Ephesians, Epistle of John, the fifth chapter, it says, If our heart condemneth not, we are confident toward God, whatever we ask, you can receive. So that means, your spirit man's conscience is the voice of your spirit man, reasoning or Let us keep it reasoning. Reasoning or intellect is the voice of your mind. Pain or feeling is the voice of your body. So now, when we say emotion, people automatically think, oh, it's all feeling, emotion. They confuse feeling with emotion, emotion with feeling. But once you know the basic meaning of that, you can not only start harnessing your emotion, you can start managing your emotion. That's what we are going to learn this month. You can start managing your emotion, then you can control your emotion, then you can overcome emotion. When you overcome emotion, you start manifesting all the invisible rewards you read in the Bible. So you see, you say, why we should Overcome emotion, my friend, pastor, why? Emotion God gave, no. I have to use, no. Correct. Because even though you are born again, if you don't harness your emotion, if you don't manage your emotion, if you don't control your emotion, and if you don't overcome your emotion, even though you are born again, even though you have the Bible, even though you speak in tongues, even though the Spirit of God is living in you, you will not be very successful spiritually because the sin a believer commits is based, it is born out of his emotion. I will give you a scriptural reference. Some of you are saying, ah, oh, I didn't hear. Yeah. You, People, that's why you see born again, tongue talking, even ministers. You catch them in some sin. Why? Because they have not overcome their emotion. Emotion, sin in the flesh, in the body for a believer is the source of that is his emotion. The book of James talks about it. We'll go there. But remember this. These are the reasons why we are going to study about emotion. These are the reasons we are going to learn how to manage our emotion, control our emotion, and overcome the emotion, because emotion part 
if you are overcome by emotion, your faith will not be effective because you will be walking by feeling. But a just shall walk by faith. That means if you are all the time allowing your emotions to control you, your emotions to overtake you and make you feel helpless, you may be a person of faith, you cannot get results as described by the Bible. So you see, many people rather than overcoming emotion, they are dominated by their emotions. Most people desire, all of us, Christians, non-Christians, any human being desire to be happy, joyful, and full of peace. But they are not free from fear, hate, sorrow, distress, frustration, resentful, bitter, angry, revengeful, unforgiving, depressed, disappointed, dissatisfied, dejected, desolate, and disillusioned. All these emotions is summed up in the Bible in one word called sad, sadness. Because any of this will make you sad. And Bible tells that we are required to take responsibility for our own emotion and we are supposed to do the four process of managing, controlling, and overcoming. God gave emotion with a reason. All emotions are not bad. Emotions have got potential to be contributing to your goodness. All good things can happen with your own emotion. And bad things can also happen. It has potential to destroy you in spite of being born again. So that is why the Bible emphasizes this subject. Instead of teaching these many churches, I'm not complaining against any church because I have been to churches before I became a minister and I found that is what they were teaching. They use emotions to stir up the people. They use emotion. But we are not to operate. We can express emotion, but we are not supposed to operate and allow our emotions to dominate us. And as a result, they think their emotions are a byproduct of whatever is happening to them or their circumstance. That is not biblical. So, since we are going to learn and we are going to do it, we'll first cover some of the basic foundation. Don't confuse feeling with emotion. What is feeling? Definition of English dictionary, feeling means to receive, no, to perceive or examine by touch. The second meaning is to be emotional, emotionally affected and to become conscious. So you see, you smell something good, you say, ah, I feel something nice. But see, you are misusing. Feeling is only the result by touch. There are five senses. Sight, hearing, smelling, taste, and touch. Feeling comes only as a result of touch. That touch can be physical, or spiritual. When you are touching something with this physical body which is hot or cold, you feel, right? You immediately say, put words and say, that is hot. Like they told me in the beginning when I came to Canada, by mistake, don't put your tongue on any steel pole during winter. I'm glad they told me that. Because they have got the same effect because it touch, it is cold. You immediately, through touch, you tell, oh, it is. Because physical touch, 
not only produces, expresses pain, same way pleasure. You know, physical pleasure comes by each other, touching each other, people want to, you know, roll around, hug around, all, because this physical touch produces pleasure as well as pain. So, if you can be touched by physical forces, you and I can be touched by spiritual force. That means when your spirit man rises and tells you, the spirit man touches your soul, it is expressed, oh, you feel joyful, you feel confident, you feel strong, you feel, oh, I can overcome this, you feel what I believe God has is, is given me, I will get it. These are all the feelings you express, but you didn't touch anything. Are you all getting this? Because you didn't touch anything, God touched you. So when God touches you, wow, you get the love of God, you feel. Physically touch also, you feel love. That love is different from God's love. When God touches you, he's called the God of hope. He touches you in your spirit, man. You are hoping, man, this situation is changing. This sickness is leaving me. This, this financial problem. Why? Because God, the God of hope is touching your spirit, man. You are conveying by speaking to your mouth, to that soul, and you feel. So feeling is only by touch. It can be spiritual or natural. What is then, what is then emotion? Emotion is affective state of consciousness in which joy, sorrow, fear, or like is experienced. So emotion, like your mind, is a collection of various feelings you experience, either by physical touch or through the touch of God. It's all collected as emotions. But God wants you, while you collect those conscious experiences, God says, now you have to learn to use it in your favor. If you don't use it, it will dominate you and you will be destroyed. How do I explain this? Again, biblical, not my opinion. I'll give you scripture, you read. If you don't understand, come and ask, I'll show you from the word. Everything is from the word through prayer and study and Holy Spirit is speaking to you. See, in the book of James, the third chapter, you'll find verse 2 and 3 talking about our tongue. And then to express the power in our tongue and words, it says in the third, third verse, James 3, Two, three. He says, we put bits in horse's mouth. And with the bit, horse is controlled. And he also talks about a small rudder in a huge ship. Comparing to our tongue, a small tongue in a huge body. is able to control the ship. So the importance of power of tongue. Tongue is used to speak words. Words are used to speak, release thoughts. Thoughts, wherever the thought goes, there the emotion goes, backing up. This thought produces this experience, this thought produces this kind of feeling. So emotion and your mind always go together. So, our emotions can be controlled, um, can be compared to a horse. I love houses. I have seen classic, really, because I, we used to live in the Middle East. We, we have seen Arabian horses, man, so elegant, so beautiful. Horse, you know, in the Bible, God uses to explain his truth in a simpler form. There are a lot of animals used when he wants to show something unclean or very low level, the pig is used. Then you hear about lambs, sheep. Then you hear about fish. You hear about lion. You hear about eagle. You hear about horses, chicken. All animals are used. 
Some are to be killed and eaten. Some are to understand how these animals work. So our emotions can be compared to a horse. Horse is very fast. Horse, if you don't, if you get a new horse, if you don't know, and if you don't control that horse in the early stage, then it will just be impossible for you to control and ride on the horse. Horses, they are 2,000 pound big animal. They are the most powerful animal. You see, in the natural, they, ca- they pull carriages, they run, their speed is so much. So, and there are different kinds of horses all right, but still they are all horse. Because they are powerful, so much so, even in the mechanical world, they measure the power in horsepower. Am I right? The car is so and so horsepower. This car is equivalent to so many horses dragging you. That is the power. So your emotions are equally powerful, like the horse. And the horse can be controlled or dominated by its head. See, a horse, if a 2,000 pound horse is lying down, and you are only a 100 pound person, if you go and catch the head of the horse while it is lying down, put your hand and put little pressure on that horse head, in spite of having 2,000 pound power, it cannot rise up. Because the horse is driven by its head. Same way, it has to slow down, it has to come down, it has to put his head down, then only it sits down. You watch in the videos. Nowadays, you get all kinds of TikToks. You can watch. When the horse, before sitting down, it will head will be down. When it is running, horse always runs in the, its head's direction. Wherever the head is, towards that only the horse will run. That is why horse races, they put a, a kind of covering in the eyes, right? Am I telling the right thing? I don't want to think only in India they do this. Horse everywhere is like that. They put a harness here. And then heart, see the, the string which is used to put the bridle and control, the word is what? Harness, right? Uh, that rein, they rein the horse with this strings. I told you I don't know much about horse, so you have got to try to understand. And they hold it. And some trained horses, they don't have to all the time pull the bit, because wherever the tongue, the horse mouth is hurt, the horse turns the head, and through the bit, they control the movement of the head for the horse to go in the direction. If the horse head is on the side, it cannot run straight. So with the bit, they control the horse, and bit is hurting. Bit is metal. But then, a trained horse, after some time, a good horse rider, you know, uh, uh, forgive me for this, they hold those strings, right? And they gently tap it on the side of the head, the horse nose. Without even hurting the horse mouth, they gently, with the string, tap it. The horse understands, the master wants to go this direction, this direction, slow down, speed, everything. Hard, doesn't have to be beat up like they do the bulls. So, your emotions are like that. That is why you read in the Psalms, David writes about, Lord, let me be, my life be like the, like rain trained, he uses the word. Rain trained means like a horse is trained with the reins. They catch hold of the reins. And the horse reacts to the rain, he says, let your spirit train me so that like a horse, with a gentle touch of you, I will respond to you. That is in the Psalms. But I'm using that to explain something here. So the emotions has to be harnessed like the horse. If you let it go, after some time, it is impossible to control your emotion, live alone harnessing, live alone overcoming. That is why many people see, they think, ah, whatever is happening is all, maybe, you know, somebody's fault, or they blame others. They don't bother and take responsibility 
for their emotion. And you say, what is this? Can I take responsibility? Yes, because you have, you are born again spirit person. You have not yet been able to take responsibility because nobody taught you how to use your own words to overcome these feelings and thoughts and emotion and bring it under control because for that all this is the tongue. But leave that early on the side, we will come to there when we want to apply this. But now, Emotions is a conscious experience of accumulated thoughts over the period somebody hurt you. It happens to all of us all the time. People hurt. People go and nowadays with this advanced technology, with all the social media, it's actually a curse. People hurt each other like anything. They cook up things, put, and then put bad things and say, please like. You wrote something bad about somebody and I have to click like? Sorry. And then another thing, they, f- they plead with you, please, not only like, please subscribe, subscribe. I don't want to subscribe to unbelief and hateful things. I don't want to do it. But it is a danger. So as a result, what is happening? We are hurt. We are open for hurt. People hurt us sometime in the office. Oh, the company I used to work before. There are days if the F word is not used, I think today is not the good day. <laughs> My bosses, that is how they, they always prefix. Almost it became, the F word became my initial. <laughs> and again, you see that people think that is showing toughness and power in the movies and all, all the time F word is used. Call that F, call this, this. And, and then they add this to before Jesus' name also. That's of the devil. But the point is, we are open to hurt. People hurt us by words, by actions, by real losing the job or accidents or somebody hitting your car or your house or anything. These things causes emotional imbalance. So when somebody hurt you, or if you are waiting for something, you are not getting what you want, you are disappointed. If you keep on getting disappointed, you get depressed. You keep on getting depressed, you get dissatisfied. If you keep on getting dissatisfied, you become desolate. If you keep on getting desolate, you are ready to die and suicide comes in. See, all these emotions are the cause of all this kind of thinking. So, you should not think that whatever is happening to you is because it's a byproduct of your life or your situation. All those things can be changed because you have the power of God, you have the word of God, You have a tongue in your mouth and you take charge and you make up your mind and say, I'm going to have what God has got for me. And that is the beginning of harnessing your emotion. One of the emotions we are going to deal because today is a communion day. One of the emotions, if you keep on thinking, what happened to you? For example, I, as a young boy, even up to the age of 18, I was a very innocent guy. I look like, you know, all in my school, all the uh, drama, uh, I had the girl's role. They'll dress me up like a girl because I look really cute and sweet. You think I'm handsome now? So, apart from that, I've been abused in every which way as a child by my own relatives, friends. Abuse means there are nights when I was young, I, could not, I wouldn't be able to get up. I'll sweat, I'll cry. But you see, I, all this is gone. I'm a happy man now because I learned from the Bible. Whereas many people think, oh, I am abused, I am abused, I am abused. Keep on talking about it. That leads to bitterness. Bitterness leads to resentment. Resentment leads to unforgiveness. Unforgiveness leads to you to be separated from God. Before you separated from God, the very God is inside you. You'll be separated from 
There's power of God. That is why it is important to overcome all this kind of emotion. I have overcome. I can talk about it. I can make a lot of fun about it. But it happened. Here in this country, if it had happened by this time, I am a multimillionaire. I sue everybody. <laughs> Before the Me Too started, I would have started Me Me. But the thing is, God wants us to have a good life. So, first beginning step we'll, we'll cover and then we'll study more. How do I begin? How do I start harnessing my emotion? Because I, am, I believe whatever you are saying, Pastor, you show me from the word. Word is greater than what you are saying. Because I can read it in my own Bible and I want it. Because you, whether you want it or not, you want to make progress and live in blessings of God, you must do this. Otherwise, you will be a one more whining, complaining Christian. That is not God's way. You have got to overcome. So the first beginning is in Deuteronomy 30th chapter we'll read. Deuteronomy 30th chapter. Deuteronomy 30th chapter. Let us read. This is the secret God himself gives. It's not my opinion. It's not psychological reading or some great Ferudian or some great Jewish psychologist or psychiatry role. This is God's word. And this is doable. I am doing it. You can also do it. Deuteronomy 30, verse number... Let me get there. 19 and 20. First, I am reading in the Amplified Version. Thank you. Heaven is confirming you are in the right way. Okay. Get back there. Deuteronomy 30, verse number 19 in the Amplified Version. I call heaven and earth to witness this day against you that I have set before you life and death, the blessings and the curses. Therefore, choose life that you and your descendants may live. Next verse. And may, and may love the Lord your God. Obey his voice. Cling to him. For he is your life and the length of your days, that you may dwell in the land with the Lord swear to give to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let us read this in the New Living Translation. It says here, verse number 19. Today, I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. You can make this choice by loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and committing yourself firmly to him. This is the key to your life. And if you love and obey the Lord, you will live long in the land the Lord has given you to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So the God is saying, it is your choice. Ch choices we have to make in life on a daily basis. God says, for example, if I ask you, how many of you love the Lord Jesus? Everybody will raise your hand. We love, we love. You say, why you are able to raise the hand? I don't feel like I am loving the Lord. I don't feel like loving you. Because the love, is, that emotion is not based on the feeling, it is based on what God has done in Romans the five, fifth chapter, verse number five says, the love of God is shared abroad in your heart through the Holy Spirit whom you have received. So the love of God is there to love God and yourself and love others. So 
you think meditate on that you are able to love everybody you don't have to say lord from today i will love you because it is natural in you so that portion is taken care the portion to important thing is god says this is the key for your life what life the life described in ephesians 2:10 amplified version the life of health wealth strength vigor vitality wisdom beauty everything put together god has got for you but you may have, you have to make a choice god says this day heaven and earth everybody is watching you because he what he said is eternal so you have to make a choice and god says i set before you life and blessing because if you choose god kind of life that is where the blessing is many people only choose run after the blessing but forget god kind of life that is why many christians are suffering because they are when you choose god when you choose life then the result is blessing when you choose death the result is curses death means you people are thinking don't immediately think about physical death death is being separated from god when you are separated from god there is no connection then how can you live that life because he wants god has moved into you to live so he says choose life and blessing death and curses and he suggests that choose life because god wants to bless you because he has already sacrificed his son jesus christ 2000 years ago and you wonder yeah but how can i overcome yeah that's what you are learning for us see all these emotions even though we study in so many details the bible calls entire negative emotion into three parts grief sorrow and pain grief is connected to your spirit man sorrow is connected to your mind and emotion and pain is connected to your body but bible says you have got to believe that in isaiah 53 verse 4 and 5 surely he bore our grief carried our sorrow and pain yet we esteemed him stricken smitten of god and afflicted but he was wounded for our transgression bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him again see first it is spirit soul and body and then body soul and spirit those two are covered in that verses so jesus already took it now you start believing before you decide to harness your emotion start saying i don't have to be sorrowful in my life i don't have to be you know bearing pain in my body i don't have to be sad at all and i don't have to grieve about things so take this scripture and confess that is because you are choosing life not only that how did jesus do just like that stood and said hey abracadabra i take all no he went through all this suffering for our sake so did jesus feel depressed this did jesus feel stressful did he feel all the hatred we feel yes go with me to matthew we'll read the amplified version Matthew the 26th chapter see what it says in the amplified version it says here Verse 37, and taking with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee, this is in Garden of Gethsemane, he began to show grief, who oh, Jesus began to show grief and distress of mind 
and was deeply depressed. People who are suffering with depression, you should take this scripture, read it over and over again and declare, Jesus already became depressed for me. I don't have to go through depression. He whom the Son set free is free indeed. Therefore, I am free from depression and depression will leave you forever. Then he says, Then said he to them, My soul is very sad and deeply grieved. That is your spirit man. So that I am almost dying of sorrow. Stay here and keep awake. So now, it is recorded officially in the Bible, Jesus went through all this emotion and in Hebrews 4th chapter it says, he, went to, he cannot be tempted with any of this feeling because he went through all these things for you and me. So why tempted? Book of James, first chapter, it says here, let us quickly go there. James 5, James 1 and verse number 13. In the Amplified, we'll read. It says here, no, I'll read it in the New Living Translation for the sake of time. I wanted to read two, but I'm going to read one. New Living Translation, book of James. It says here, 13th verse. And remember, when you are being tempted, you are being tempted do not say, God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong. He never tempts anyone else. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entices us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions. And when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. The same verse, I want to read it in the King James, it says, Let no man, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempeth, tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away from his own lust and enticed. So desire and lust is a definition for your emotion. So you see, what is desire means? You should know the English basic meaning. Desire and lust is the same meaning. Lust means to have an intense desire, to have a yawning or desire, a strong or excessive craving. This is the definition fits into all types of emotion. If you have got this intense desire to hold a grudge against somebody, if you have st strong craving to get even with somebody, see, it's one thing to get forgiven by God and by others, which is good. But when you offend somebody, if it is possible and they are around, it is your responsibility to go and apologize, seek their forgiveness and then restore. Then only your emotion you can overcome. Otherwise people say, ah, I said already sorry, that's not the way it works. You have got to do by, that's why you see, in episode, I mean, Matthew 18, it says, unless you forgive somebody from the bottom of your heart, it says. So forgiveness is a strong emotion which can separate you from the blessings of God. So God says, you are tempted. Tempted. When we talk about temptation, we are always thinking about going and sinning, drinking, doing drugs or things like that. You can be tempted to hold a grudge against somebody. You can be tempted to take revenge against somebody. You can be tempted to, you know, 
use malice wait for your time even though you pretend that you are forgiving but you are holding and those temptation actually they are powerful emotion they will destroy you but jesus bible says that's why i titled today's message as the believer sins because of his emotion uncontrolled emotion believer sins same way a believer he has got strong desire but i have done this to watch all the shows on the television evening 5 o'clock <laughs> she is laughing i used to do that next day friday evening to it's called weekend i am weak at the end <laughs> and saturday whole day now don't even leave that sofa of mine in the basement because we came from a country we had only four channels out of which three channels were controlled by government another one was advertisement channel here you come you got 65 still growing all at those time we didn't even have netflix and amazon and all those plus they all minus fellows i was craving watching my wife will say jay we have to pray yeah yeah i am praying you pray we are one in the lord jay. all scripture wrongly quoted day and night watching go on sunday morning i sat in glad tidings here which is a warehouse now cuz i left the church they moved i always made to sit in the middle rebecca this side my wife this side because three days i have been watching television so when the pastor and the pastor also is a very sleepy guy and the way he talks it is like lullaby so you start <laughs> then my wife will what's the time <clears throat> why you are asking my time all the time so from the behind my wife will finger my daughter you ask now so this side daddy what is the time <clears throat> okay but see that is pretending to be in church i have already seen through the strong lustful desire of craving to stay away from god that's how all other emotions come into action i just gave you an example so god says you choose life love god you are choosing life and blessing so you confess over your life i choose life and blessing therefore i will be glad and not sad i will be forgiving and not unforgiving i will let it go than to be resentful i will let it go than to be bitter and angry about not only people anything around me i'll be free because god has set me free i have chosen life and blessing you make a beginning today and we will conclude that decision with communion confirm to god that we are choosing we are choosing to harness our emotion we are choosing to control our emotions we are choosing to manage our emotion and we are choosing to overcome our emotion it is a covenant decision we are making be sincere and do it and god's power will work in your life god's grace will be abounding towards you and you and i are more than conqueror in all these thing because god already sees us like that that we are overcomers amen? amen so with this i'll stop it here i got so many things to say i am so excited but then you know now we are technologically everything has to be nicely fit into time frame but anyway any of you watching this program later on facebook or anything i have to follow the culture so please click like and subscribe Church is joy and fun. Amen. Hello, I'm Conrad. I'm on the media team here at Word of His Power Church. Thank you for joining us today. I would like to remind you to check out our website at www.wohp.org and like and follow us on Facebook. We are Word of His Power Church, the place where lives are changed and people are blessed.